morning, church. Morning. Nice to have everybody here, especially have our, one of my favorite people from chapel here today. So, yeah. <laughs> and Lucas is here today, too, so that's nice, too. Yeah, yeah Lucas, thanks for helping us out. The food pantry, if I have a quick announcement. Um, the food well, come on up here, Lucas. Okay. Okay. It was the announcement I have in my hand. I think it's what you have, Lucas, but go um, for it. The food pantry needs any type of food that we can get, and if you guys have any type of food that you can give, please give it until next, till the fourth Saturday. Thank you. Yeah, pretty good, Carol. Okay, yeah, uh, specifically canned goods and cereal. So uh, Feeding America really doesn't have as much as the, they have in the past to help us out. And what's the other one, Harvest? They were a little thing. Yeah, they want to harvest this thing too. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, and there are a lot of needs right now with people, you know, with all the snow and everything like that. So uh, they were really a lot of people here on Saturday, I guess, you know, kind of really wanting food. So anyway, if you can help us out, that'd be great. And uh, we have a, a cup that we give to visitors, but I'm going to give you the new cup. Okay, is, well, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. She's got the sparkly shoes too, so that's very nice. So we have uh, refreshments afterwards, okay, if you want to stick around for those. You don't have to have coffee either. You can give that to your mom if you don't, have, if you don't want coffee. And then I've forgotten your name already. Chris, Chris, nice to have you here, Chris. And I got a cup for you too. I just didn't have enough packed in back here, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, let's see, any other announcements? Preschool meeting uh, tomorrow, so. Oh, um, the American Road Trip Grill and the Faith Lutheran Church um, preschool will, on the 29th from 9 to, from 11 to 9 p.m. at American Road Trip Grill in person. All the donations from that day will go straight to Faith Lutheran <laughs> Food Bank. Uh, Preschool, if you bring a flyer right, and okay. carols, should be able to have those at the end. So if you want one, please. Okay, ask okay. yeah, I know. You just don't have a mic, so a lot of, a lot of people didn't catch that. So uh, we're doing a fundraiser for the preschool. Now you've got a link to the, um, oh, what candy is that? Seize candy, seize candy. So we have that. But there's also, if you go to the diner on the 29th, Am I right there, Carol? Okay, they gave 20% of you the check to a charity, and it would be our charity, our preschool. So, you know, if you can help us out, that'd be appreciated. And Carol, Carol, do you have the little handouts? I will buy the coffee. Oh, buy the coffee. So, yeah, head to the coffee and you'll be able to catch that. Okay. I think that's all the announcements. It's nice to be back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> At the funeral for my mom, it was very nice. I was going to talk about it a little bit later, but uh, couldn't be re really better in a way. May we all be so lucky to live to be 101. And, uh, you know, family around singing to you and that sort of thing. <clears throat> Actually, my mom says, don't go for the triple digits. <laughs> it gets a little tougher after 100. So just a heads up, you know, if you're planning out your life, <laughs> that might be a consideration. Shall we stand for our opening count?
Well, before we really get into the service, we like to do confession, so we just let go of any sins or regrets that we might have. So we approach uh, our blessed Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gifts of grace. Amen. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess you are false and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil our weapons over your creation. We cause her and call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us and heal us and lead us as we seek to follow you. Amen. Here's the good news. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that all could receive life. May this promise, this promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you with the Spirit's power. Amen. Amen. Okay. 
kind of a quiet book, a book. Okay. But they all had something. Isn't that great? Woohoo! Jesus said that he's like living water. That he was thirsty one day, and he came to a lady. She, uh, we don't know her name, but she's just called a Samaritan woman. And did she give him something to drink? Do you think? Jesus, it was hot. It was like noon. So he's going, oh, man, really, let's look a little hot. How about that? You guys, you're going to, oh, you look really hot. Oh, that, yeah, that, he's fading. That's, <laughs> yeah, Joey's got it down. Now. Okay, so uh, he was hot, and he asked for something to drink from this lady, this American woman. Would you give her something to drink? Jesus something to drink if he was thirsty. Water. Water. Yeah, that, that's really good. He gave, she gave him some water. And then they had a nice conversation back and forth once he got the water. And he said, you know, what is really refreshing for my soul? Because they came back, he hadn't had lunch, they asked him. And he said, you know what really makes me happy? You know what Jesus said? He said, sharing with people. Because they had a nice conversation. He shared with the woman and she was really happy. He can go, woohoo! <laughs> now, come on, in preschool we can do that. Woo! <laughs> oh boy. Now, let's see, do we have uh, directors in here, somebody can help with the acting? This is good. <laughs> oh, no, Julian, yeah, that'd be good. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for coming up. You know what we have now is if you like to go and uh, they have a lesson in the back there, and then you don't have to listen to my sermon. So. Yeah, you want to go back there? Do you think she'd be up for it? Oh, yes. oh, oh she, she's going. Okay, can you guys come this way and then take her there, will you? Okay. Okay, because this is Rachel. She'll lead the class. It's three people. Three people. It's Rachel and Charlie. Yeah, and Charlie. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture, 
and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear the God's voice. Pardon not your hearts, as in your love, as in your case, and your love, and the There your ancestors tested me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty days I know that generation said, Hey, the heart of this people goes astray. They do not know my ways. Indeed, I swore in my anger, they shall never come to my rest. The second reading is from Romans chapter 5. <laughs> Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Word of God, Word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the gospel. Sitting, you can. But here we go. Jesus came to a Samaritan town called Sachar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews did not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would ask him, and he would give, have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket. The well is very deep. Where do you get the living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well? And with his son and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and have him come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You're right when you say, I have no husband, for you've had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you're a prophet. 
Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you worship the Father neither on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You will worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming who is called to Christ. When He comes to proclaim all things to us, Jesus said, I am He, the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples came. They were astonished that He was speaking to a woman, but no one said, What do you want? Or why are you speaking to her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see the man who told me everything I've ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, saying, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do know about. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not, uh, do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and gathering fruit for, for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying holds true. One sows, another reaps. I send you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him and they asked him to stay with them, he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It's no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this truly is the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May be seated. So we have conversations with Jesus here in the Gospel of John. And all of the miracles in the Gospel of John have, are a sign of something more. So in this, there's no miracle for the woman other than Jesus tells her something about herself. Um, especially that she evidently had a little trouble with relationships when you have five husbands. Um, both of my sisters were divorced. And they had two, but to get to five, that's, that's a journey. These conversations that Jesus has with Nicodemus, now with this woman, and then uh, later with the blind man, and also with uh, Mary and Martha at the death of Lazarus, are part of our 40-day journey. And one of the pieces that we want to think about as we enter the 40 days of Lent here is, why me, God? Why is God interested in me? And some people don't think God could really particularly be interested in you. I mean, you look around the universe, a pretty large universe out there, we're just one little teeny speck as a part of it all. So why would the creator of all this be interested in us? Well, my answer in part is that have you looked at the universe out there? It's a lot of molten, you know, energy being thrown off, dark holes or black holes, and then they've got, uh, you know, rocks, frozen rocks traveling around. There aren't really, if I was looking around the universe, I'd be kind of interested in what's going on here because it's actually something alive that has its own uh, determination about what it wants to do. Sometimes people ask that question, though, like, why me, God? Like, God is attentive, but not enough, because, you know, why am I suffering? Kind of like Garfield, why me? Now, if you read Garfield, by the way, there's a lot of reasons that it would be <laughs> that he gets in trouble. I like this with the squirrel, why me? It's kind of a question, uh, I'm going to reflect on my mom just a bit, and my dad. But when my dad died, he was uh, 57. He died over 45 years ago now. And uh, 
the question I ask is why? Why him? Why this family? And 57 is pretty young. And why not pick somebody else? There were other people I could have named that might have been a better option than my father. And so it's a question that kind of settles in the bone. Here's a picture of my dad at the graduation of my brother, Jim, and I'm in the background there, the handsome guy with the, you know, Oh, yeah. And you go, ooh, yeah, pretty good. Okay. <laughs> and my two sisters, they're all at his graduation from St. Olaf, by the way. And here's my mom. Now here, my mom, on the other hand, is 45 years longer than my dad. She's 101. And at 101, her question was, kind of, why me? Why am I still around? You know, her sister had the best quote that, that I love. She would wake up some mornings and she'd go, oh, I'm still here. <laughs> kind of that way. My mom never said that, but she did kind of wonder as, you know, you look around and, and why, why in particular me for 101 years? Uh, one of the great stories I had is uh, a woman in our parish she was 90 years old, never been in the hospital, only to have her two kids. And uh, while she was in there, I came by and visit. She said, you know, why is this happening to me at, that I'm in the hospital? And I thought, you're 90 in the hospital for the first time since you had kids. The, the other way, why me? Why am I so blessed? Jesus sees this woman and it's... Uh, why me? You know, why has Jesus to, uh, chosen me? Why did he come to this part? This is a little map of uh, Judea to Galilee. Galilee is in the kind of the pink at the top. And a lot of people, you could avoid Samaria altogether if you went around towards the outside. And a lot of people made that journey rather than go through Samaria because they didn't like Samaritans. And the Good Samaritan, you remember that story? Well, that's about somebody that shouldn't have been helping, really, but he was a very good person and did help. And here's a Samaritan woman. Now there's two things about this woman. Why me? Why is Jesus talking about to me? First, she's a woman. And in those days, you did, guys didn't talk to ladies in the, out in the open without somebody else around. And second, a Samaritan. Why are you talking to me? Why is Jesus including me? And that's a good place to start for Lent, is that why is Jesus interested in me and my life. And you know, you look around at creation and all the beauty that's there. I, to me, why not? Why isn't God interested in each and every one of us? The purpose of our life, this is Rick Warren, first person, purpose of your life is to be loved by God. Just to, just to know that God does include you. And that was certainly the message for the Samaritan woman. By the way, uh, Rick Warren's church, this is a quote from Rick Warren actually, and he's retired now, but his church, they're ordaining women now. And uh, they're getting kicked out of the Southern Baptist Convention for ordaining women, so how about that? Just to brag on the Luther Church here, we've been uh, ordaining women for 50 years now, so uh, it's quite a different place. But you see it in Jesus' ministry. That's why we're doing what we're doing, is he includes this woman who didn't think she would be included in what God had to offer in the world. Why me? Why is God interested in me? And Jesus wants to show in this example that God cares for each and every one of us. Not just for, the last week was Nicodemus, you're a Pharisee, I had some power there in the Sanhedrin, and then now this woman, he's also talking to her. See how broad God's love is for us and how he includes us? And so, as Lent starts, to say, why me? Why does God love me so? Why does God care for me so? This is from the psalm. The Heavenly Father loves you, and He loves to help you. The Lord hears when I cry to Him. The woman kind of changes the conversation now and says, well, where's the best place to worship God? Is it on this mountain, Mount Gerizim, which... Uh, when they entered Jerusalem, uh, entered the Holy Land, that was one of the first places of worship was on this mount. And there are some uh, 
still ancient ruins there of the place where they used to worship God. But when King David came along, while he conquered Jerusalem, they came into the Holy Land and then they began to conquer lands and now he had Jerusalem, so he built the temple there. Solomon built the temple there. And Herod uh, rebuilt it and that's uh, what was around at the time of Jesus. It was destroyed in uh, 70 AD after Jesus' ministry. But God wants us to talk with him as a friend, father, authentically, reverently, personally, in earnest. That's Bill Hybels. And then what a wonderful way to say. Here this woman kind of distracts the conversation. Well, where should we worship? Should we worship over here? Should we worship over there? What should we be doing? And Jesus said, just it's spirit and truth. Just approach God. Know that God cares about you. You don't have to go to a particular place to show God you care about God. You need to get in your head that God cares about you, personally. And then he talks about the living water. And you know, this woman, various parts of the world, they have to get water. And uh, I'll tell you what, talk about a workout. I mean, when you're hauling jugs of water, they're heavy. I go on walks, I go to, around our place, you can get to the grocery store and that sort of thing with a backpack, get a couple of gallons. <laughs> I get a gallon of milk and throw it in my backpack and boy, I'll tell you, it's about a mile and a half home again. You know, this is a bit of a workout. Well, people have to do that all the time in various places in the world. They gotta haul this water. And this woman is going out at noon to get water. And that would indicate that she doesn't have too many friends. Because, I mean, if you're going out and having a haul of water, you might as well go with some friends and enjoy the time, you know, have a little conversation while you're doing it. But she's got nobody. Plus, she's going at noon. Like, duh, that's hot. Why are you doing that? Well, maybe she was kind of rejected, especially after having five husbands. This is a pretty small town, you know. <laughs> I don't know how many males were even in the town, you know, and this woman's got six of them actually, because she's with somebody that's not even her husband. So nobody really wants to go with her, and yet God includes her. How about that? I mean, it's not just Nicodemus, not just Pharisees doing all the right things. It's this woman who seems to, you know, kind of be a little confused about her journey in life. And Jesus is there for her. And this conversation is a wonderful refreshment for her soul. And you know, if we can remember that God's there for us, that loves us, cares about us, that can be a wonderful refreshment for our soul. And what a great place to start before we do anything else, to hear that. Because sometimes you get busy, 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 and you think, oh, well, God will be kind of impressed, or somebody will be kind of impressed. Well, better place to start is that God loves you first, and then to use that. That was a great thing about my mom. You know, she always knew the love of God was there through her and for us. And it was always projected out, not just to us, but also to other people around as well. She used to say that there, uh, of all her grandkids, she had 10 of them. She brought them all out to California, too, to go to Disneyland. Had a lot of fun. But uh, she said there wasn't a bad one in the bunch. And me being the person I am, I funeral said, well, she didn't know them all that well. <laughs> you know, kind of sick, sad humor that I have. But frankly, as I was thinking about it, driving up, they really were all cool. Even the kids of my sister, who had a very troubled life, um, they were lovingly there for my sister after dying, and they were there for my mom's funeral as well. And, uh, and the really surprising thing, oh, we were at a cemetery. My dad was buried there 45 years ago. My dad buried there. And after he left that church, they had some other pastors, but eventually the church just died. They sold the property and everything. It wasn't even there anymore. And yet, at the funeral, my sister, you know, sent out to my mom's Christmas letter list, and there were 45 people from that church that were there at the funeral. Isn't that something? Just shows you the power of love in the world. I mean, it's, you know, kind of people get busy or they think of other things, but really when you project out this love that Jesus gives you, it's a wonderful thing. 
It's so lasting and beautiful. It's a refreshment for the soul. It certainly was for this woman who was like, oh, she just got drenched in joy herself. So she goes running back to town and says, hey, I got some water, living water from Jesus. He told me about myself. And so she invites all the people out to come and see this living water for themselves. And they see it for themselves. Jesus stays there a couple of days and they say, you know, you talked about it first and that got us a tree. But when we started receiving this wonderful news, and how much wonderful news can it be for these Samaritans who were always looked at, you know, kind of thumbs down by the Jews, to have a, this rabbi come to them and speak to them of the love of God. Uh, you know, some people, they grab hold of their money and they just cling to it like, this is going to do something for me if I have some cash. And I'll just tell you, my mom, she spent her money taking those kids to Disneyland and out here to Southern California. And when you're at a funeral, nobody's talking about how your IRA is doing or something, you know? They're all talking about these beautiful moments that you were with them. So I just got to say, let the love of God sit in your heart and then project it out like this woman did. And I'll tell you what, life has a joy that 45 years later, those people remember you and they care about you and they're going to, they don't have to be at my funeral, I don't care that much, but I mean, to, to know that what you do has a lasting impact on people, it's a beautiful thing. Sometimes we need to be refreshed in this and have our own conversation with Jesus. Uh, like when my dad died, I had conversations like, what are you doing, Lord, and that kind of thing. God doesn't mind, by the way, if you read the Psalms, let it out. If you're ticked at God for something, just scream it out. And you won't do any worse than the Psalms. I'll tell you what, they're, they're full of it, you know. Telling God, hey, I've been worshiping you. I've been caring about you. And what kind of junk are you throwing my way? And you destroy me? Nobody's going to sing your praises. How about that, Lord? So, I mean, the Psalms are full of this stuff. So let it out. Be authentic about who you are. And, and then, you know, consult the Bible, hear what it has to say with you. I just had to put this quote in from Pope Francis. God wants to talk to you. Consult your Bible as often as your cell phone. <laughs> I got my Bible on my cell phone, so <laughs> that's kind of nice. My mom, uh, you know, as she, she thought about life, thought about the importance of love and projecting it out in the world. And for this woman, there was a replay. She had gone on with these relationships and hadn't found anything that brought her contentment. And now she had kind of rewind. She could go back in her life and redo. One of my mom's favorite quotes, and that really helped my sister along. My sister would call my mom every night. And uh, she was also there when my mom died. Yeah, I gotta tell you that part of the story. So my mom is, uh, you know, she's not eating anymore finally at the end. Her throat was just getting smaller and smaller. She was squeezing in all these um, uh, smoothies, you know, they got this in the pouches. You know about pouches, you know, we used to have to spoon out of a jar to feed our kids. Do, do you use those pouches now? The kids just squeeze it in themselves. Like, uh, so anyway, that's the kind of thing my mom would have. And it just became too much. It was like going to the gym every time you eat. You know, you just, just get tired of it. And uh, what she would say to my sister, who's going through, uh, she had some treatment for cancer that she's going through. She says, well, you accept it and you move on. You know, my father died 45 years ago. You accept it and you move on. Because God has still a journey for you in your life. So this woman, five relationships, living with another guy, you accept it, but you can move on. Life can have a different pattern for you. You don't get to really edit your life all that much. You know, the universe is in constant motion, so there's always something coming our way. But we can know this, that God's love is there. Be grateful for life, not every <laughs> 
yeah, I threw this in there because of my mom. <laughs> Be grateful for it, <laughs> for life. Not everyone made it this far, but not everybody makes it to 100, and she actually wouldn't suggest it. But um, why me, God? Why do some live so long and such a have their minds still with them? I mean, my mom, that was wonderful. Why do some die, you know, at 57, 45 years earlier? Don't get answers to all those questions. Why me, God? Some can be, why me? Why is so fortunate in my life? Some can be, why me? Why am I so despondent in life? What Paul tells us that is that wherever we are in life, even if you're an enemy of God, we're reconciled to him through his death of his son. Much more having been reconciled, we'll be saved through his life. Saved through his life so we can have life. Hebrews says, for the joy that was set before him, <clears throat> Jesus endured the cross. When the disciples came back from this conversation, Jesus tried to tell this woman how much God loves her and is there for her in her life and how she responds to it. It's just a beautiful thing. And other people in the town get that message too. It's great. And what the disciples, they went to, um, you know, get something to eat, Taco Bell, McDonald's, I don't know, it doesn't say no, I don't know where they went. But they come back with food for Jesus, and he says, you know, I'm pretty full because I've been sharing the love of God with the world, with this woman. And, it, I, and that, that's built me up. And I, I hope we can all experience that kind of joy uh, that is set before us. It might not be a cross for us, but whatever trials and tribulations we go through, Paul tells us, that we can learn endurance and patience and that, whatever it is. But I'll tell you this, <clears throat> the joy that was set before Jesus is you. You're the joy. That's why I went through it, for you. You're his joy. So may we all just receive that joy ourselves in our lives and then project it to the world. Let's pray for that. Lord, we thank you so much for enduring the cross for us in this Lenten season and have these conversations. This one helps us remember we are included in that joy. And you went to the cross, Lord, for the joy of us to include us. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand for the
you to join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all creation. You may be seated. Pray for your church. Bless partnerships with other Christians and interreligious dialogue. Guide the daily work of denominational and congregational leaders. Strengthen our combined witness for the sake of the gospel, that all experience your life-giving love. Merciful God, we see our prayer. We pray for the universe. All creation teems with life from the depths of the earth and seas to the skies above. Fill us with awe and reverence for the diversity and preservation of life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, topple the dividing walls that separate us from our neighbors. Form us into your beloved community where diversity of gender, race, language, ability, and ethnic origin celebrated and affirmed. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. We present with all who are lonely and give courage to all who are afraid. Comfort those who live with chronic illness or other sickness, especially Bill, Tanya, Jeannie, Eloise, Linda, Becky, Donna, Jessica, Kira, Gloria, Jim, Maria, Brandon, Rebecca, Lucas, and Brooke. Give them your living waters always. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation, especially those preparing for baptism. Nurture their faith and pour your love into their hearts. Inspire our community by their testimony to God's grace and in their lives. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for the lives of all your saints, Al, uh, Myri, their hope in you to sustain lives of faith and service. Encourage us with the hope they shared in you. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love, your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand. <clears throat>
she was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to pray, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son. Holy food and drink of a new unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints to the joy of your everlasting kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to speak the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May be seated. I invite you to receive communion the uh, Lighter liquid in the middle is the grape juice.
after the prayer. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Amen. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection, and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen. Serve 